Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the last glance of summer sunlight. And welcome to this, episode 15 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. Today we're going to be continuing to explore the citizen housing and the dankies and the uh, other little apartments and stuff, of which there's just an insane amount and probably tons to discover. I'm actually tempted to edit out everything that's me moving through this space, but the exploration is a part of the experience. Being able to see things and open gates and uh, move through these spaces is as much a part of the experience as any of the interesting little nuggets of, uh, of lore, or indeed plot, that we discover about this uh, extremely horrible death cult wonderland that we have all found ourselves trapped in. So, uh, yeah. Without further ado, let's have a bit more ado, because I've just remembered that I did actually have a thought that I forgot to mention last episode about this guy. I mentioned previously that I think this guy, I thought this guy was the, the only god that was yet alive. That's not actually the case. That is the only god that has ever been successfully repatriated into the Paradise Island sequences that um, their strike teams have ever successfully brought from Earth into this reality bubble. Um, so I was wondering what the symbolism of the... Uh, of the crying statue watering the crops is, or the flowers rather, does this... <laughs> is this intended to be some kind of a symbolism, or is this just something that the designers of the game thought would look cool? This is uh, one of the eternal questions that plagues someone who is trying to do literary criticism to games live while playing them, which is my whole deal, although I, uh, I'm rather worse at it now than I was before Covid, thanks to what may or may not be literal goddamn brain damage, which I won't shut up about. Don't catch COVID if you can help it. I know that's really difficult now that uh, now that the world's just decided. You know, you get your uh, you get your government mandated deadly pathogen exposure every day, and uh, you have to put up with it and like it. Uh, rant over. Let's go get a nice drink. C four. Jesus, they sell explosives out of the vending machines here? Crystal sparkling water. Sparkling water is famed for its crispness and delightful mouthfeel. This is completely untrue. Sparkling water is, is absolutely foul. It is one of the least pleasant experiences I think it's possible to have as a human being while still being something you can get out of a vending machine. Obviously, there are more, more unpleasant experiences, but if you ever find a vending machine capable of providing, for example... Um, well, I was going to say the experience of vicious salmonella, but I suppose if you find a, a badly kept... Sufficiently badly kept vending machine, you can absolutely have the experience of, of awful, horrible salmonella. Um, let's see. I think there's probably something down here to find. After all, it would make sense to start at the bottom and work my way up, since this area is so heavily, heavily arrayed. It's another blue crest. I'm starting to think that they're basically just equivalent to the uh, the gems, the the crystals. They're they're really just a resource that you can use freely for little bits and bobs, rather than something that's going to have some kind of important result. Uh, which I do believe is the case with the red crests. But yeah, so the symbolism of that statue. Are we, are we to take from that that um, by this uh, by this individual's misery is our own our own profit? Um, that would be the most obvious take. That that god that that god weeps so that we can have beautiful things. This. Oh, it's locked from the other side? Well, gee. I have solved your... I have solved your, uh, have solved your, your in intense puzzle of um, physical logistics. These blue braziers are interesting, though. The symbolism of blue fire in Japanese culture is, is ghosts and spirits and things. Um... I wonder if that's intentionally replicated here, since this game does have a huge uh, degree of um, 
of uh, it has it has a degree of having been influenced by Japanese pop culture, I would say. So yeah, expect today to see a lot of wandering around reading pickups. Oh, this is odd. This is not how this has gone previously. Uh, we usually get an item and then uh, we read the item. Huh. Enchanted Blue, an ancient god who chooses her servants and deceives them with the promise of power. Those that swear allegiance to her work to further her goals and benefit from the gift of physical perfection and strong mind. They change rapidly and dramatically, becoming blessed with beauty and intelligence. In return, they are forever bound to her whims, losing their mind over centuries as they're enraptured by her deception. Currently sealed in the hidden pyramids of the Sahara. This sounds exactly like what Lydia said about Yuri. Maybe he has been deceived. Well, I mean, she'd know since she's already been deceived by a god. Deception by a god is classed as a crime, but the deceived are really victims. Still gives him a motive, though. And then here's that same piece of information once again. Yeah. It's definitely looking like uh, Yuri's involved in some way. Also, this is this seems to be like the most heavily supported of the shrines that we've seen so far. Most of them are just little little boxes that have a carving in. That one uh, seems to have been uh, made pretty on purpose. But that um, that makes me wonder, actually. There's definitely something going on with regards to the difference between worship and deception. Symbols of the possessed. It's pretty messed up that you can be possessed by a demon. Like, really messed up, don't you think? I mean, yes, it is pretty messed up, but, like, these people's lives are almost entirely possessed by their, um, horrible society. It's not like they have anything other than their bodies to themselves. So I suppose in that respect it is extra fucked up. A monument to the moon. The sphere of death that is split in two by a great chasm. I can feel the grim silence from the deserted city of the dark side. There is some just some there's some cool as hell stuff in this game for all that I make criticism. Sewer maintenance access. Yeah, so this is almost certainly the method by which we reach uh, Crimson Acid. So let's come back down here in a minute and talk to her later. So I think I've explored everything on the lowest level around the uh, these blocks. So I should probably have a look inside these blocks and see if there's anything to find. There's an item over there as well. And I can definitely hear items as I'm sprinting past stuff. This place is huge. How am I supposed to find everything? Perhaps I'm not. Or perhaps that's what the uh, meditation power-up is really for. Hmm. I think... I need to take this, like, segment by segment, so I'm gonna head back to where we were previously. But yeah, so, I do find myself wondering, what is, uh, the difference between worship and, uh, deception? So, okay, this is, this is the end of where we were yesterday, so we've explored everything in this, like, line beyond here. So... This house we've had a look at. This house we haven't, because this is where we dropped down, so it makes sense to check here next. But yeah, so... Crimson Acid is, is respected because she gained a blessing. Um, and apparently that's fine. That's not... that's not crimes. But, um... Like, what is the difference? What is the... is there a meaningful difference between worship and deception. What does it mean to be deceived by a god rather than to simply receive a blessing from them? Way of Blood Bar, 25th Island Sequence. Time moves differently on the island. I can't decide if I like it. Nor can I. It does things to people. What kind of things? It twists people, distorts their hearts. I think that's what happened to me. So do I. <laughs> Oof. Oof, buddy. That's rough. Unless you meant to her, not to him. Uh, I, I'm just guessing at their genders because their pictures invite me to do so. Chaos Domain. Made in ex-bourbon casks. Has a fruity taste. Best savoured in an enveloping frog. 
Do not look at other people enjoying the fog. I did nearly misspeak and say developing frog, but um, I mean, I'd love, I'd love to have a developing frog. Is, wait, hang on, isn't that just a tadpole? Vibing. Watch beautiful water to catch the vibes. It's the only way. Existing without vibes is no existence at all. I mean, I feel like that's possibly intended to be deeply ironic. Um, you know, with perhaps the commodification of culture and the idea that there is nothing, that there should be nothing deeper to it than simply vibes. Simply lights and sounds for us to look at. Um, but it's actually kind of true. One of the huge problems with the capitalist system in which we are all horribly trapped is that human beings are treated as interchangeable cogs and everything extraneous to the fundamental necessities of remaining alive is considered completely worthless. Which is insane. Human Humans get miserable if they don't have beautiful things around them. And by beautiful things, I mean things that they like that make them happy. Decoration is a fundamental psychological need. Uh, as much as as much as anything else, you know. Um, and miserable people are not. It's not good. It's bad. Obsequious love letter. A love letter from a young couple. R says he'll kill the moon with a railgun to prove his love to L. That's a mood. I wonder if railguns are controlled substances. Anyway, uh, that was not a particularly developed thought I was just having, so I, I would rather actually come back to that another time when I have uh, a better way of phrasing that, because frankly, like... I don't know. I've got something vaguely, but I don't know what it is. It's also fine to go through these people's mail, because uh, A, they're all dead, and B, I'm the police! Coveted loyalty card. A loyalty card for the Second Heaven convenience store. They pride themselves on fried chicken. There is only one convenience store on the island. This card says, in association with Dead Nebula. In case you can't tell, I was being ironic. Um, in fact, one of the things I find curious about this game is its sort of flirting with propaganda, Because there doesn't seem to be any question about whether or not... Um, Lady Love Dies should have the right to go through all this stuff, should have the right to just breach people's privacy, to browbeat them into giving them her tele uh, their telephones, all of these things. Um, it has decided, or it has been decided by the developers to represent this society as being a horrible, awful place, and that's intentional, and it's used to critique our own society, which is a horrible, awful place. However, there are a lot of unquestioned assumptions, I think, being replicated here. Um, and uh, that's definitely a thought that I will go into more detail upon another time, because you know what? In case you can't tell by the quality of today's episode, I'm, uh, I'm kind of struggling a bit. Um, I am in the middle of the worst cold I've had in a while. I thought I had COVID, but I've tested negative a couple times, so I probably don't. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that it sucks, and I don't like it. So, uh, yeah, as is usually the case, if I'm sick, you can't expect the best of episodes. You know, I thought these things were supposed to change their colour or whatever whenever I use them to unlock stuff. Aha! Sunset Song by Apoc Watch the sunset with me. Listen to the ocean. Just one last time. The sunset heals all. For all that I've said that... Actually, let's talk to Shinji first. This paradise is creeping me out. When the veil falls and the naked body of crime is exposed, the island begins to crumble. The balance is tilted and the illusion falls apart. Um, I, I, I want to be nice to Shinji. Something... This, I don't know why, but I have this feeling that there's something earnest about Shinji. Um, for, I'm, after all, my working theory is that there's not really any meaningful difference between a god and a demon. Gods are just really big demons. Um, and, I mean, Shinji seems to want to help me. I mean, maybe that's just part of me uh, falling for whatever his, uh, whatever his long game is, but still. That's poetic. I'm trying it out. I know you think I'm an asshole. I'm giving speaking nice a go. It's hard, though. 
You're doing well. You're making me blush, love dies. Peace. But yeah, um, for all that I, I don't think that the way the music is deployed in this game, I think that the music itself is very good. And there is something that absolutely delights me uh, about the sort of archetypical nature of the songs that are presented. Wait, hang on, do I have headlights on the shore twice? Weird. If I... If I clear this completely... Uh, if I go surprise, it should put everything in here one time. But uh, the thing is, a lot of these soundtracks are very intentionally pastiches of very specific flavours of song. This is the song that plays with a sunset in the background at the end of that 1980s film that you loved. A lot of them do genuinely have these particular vibes. This is absolutely the sound of driving your souped up coupe down a long ass highway with the beautiful azure blue of the ocean in the background as you finally escape from the fucking tangled coil of your life. Your hair streaming in the wind and the credits rolling. And I just think that's really nice. I think that the music in this is great. Island Sequence 24. How will 24 be remembered? Will this island be perfect? Is this our eternal home? Clearly not. Whoop, I was close. So yeah, um, I think that it's very well observed and well made in and of itself. It successfully manages to do that thing where it is both the thing that it is, uh, de it's, it's both deeply referential to itself and also a great example of the thing that it is being referential to at the same time. Did I just say the same thing twice? I'm not sure. Oh, a grave. In loving, in loving memory of Tamago, the best Hamu and my friend. Uh, what's a Hamu? Is that a dog or something? These seem like slightly nicer than the previous ones. Let's see. I better not get lost or I'll miss things. That over, that over there is the, is the convenience store. This is a lower level. Okay, I'm, I'm describing. The back side of a square that will lead me back to where we were. Gaudy blood pendant. A gemstone fused with the owner's blood. Worn by the prideful with something to show. I wonder if this itself ref reflects um, part of the uh, the tendency of the, the um, lower tiers of society to take what they consider to be granting of prestige from whatever the higher tiers of society's uh, value, aesthetically or otherwise. Suspicious videotape. Unmarked videotapes strike fear into the minds of the cautious. What's on it? Who made it? Why was it abandoned? Will I be put on a list if the authorities know that I have it in my possession? Well shit, isn't that a mood for uh, the digital panopticon we all live in daily? But yeah, so um, I was having a thought and I was interrupted by the object I chose to pick up willingly of my own free will and now I've forgotten what my thought was. That's the flaw with doing a uh, let's play when you're on flu medication. Oh wait, I remember. I was thinking about... Recondite Ornate Book, an ornate collection of tales of the silent goat, given as a coming of age present. Okay, cool. So these people have replicated the fancy Bible, uh, uh, the fancy Bible paradigm of um, like Protestant Christian uh, cultures, I guess, subcultures, groups. Anyway, um, oh my god, it happened again. What the fuck was I talking about? It's all gone. It's all turned to ash and dust. Ah, uh, if I lose focus for even a second, everything turns into the wind and blows away. Relic Knowledgeable listening device, used to intercept communications between citizens. So much inanity, some horniness, thousands of secrets. 
I mean, I guess that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment, really. Aha, Shinji. But yeah, no, they do very much want to ram home that none of the ordinary citizens in this society have any measure of privacy. I expect that the uh, the privileged members of this society, the members of the syndicate, believe themselves to have privacy, but also do not. After all, we know that the fabric of the island itself enshrines um, all occurrences that, that, that take place uh, into its own fabric. The rain here is a blessing, love dies. The island is too hot. Heat makes people crazy. Why can't you fix that? The syndicate runs this island. It's a miracle there isn't a slaughter every day. Uh, well, I do actually want to know what's up with the reality folding drive, so I will explain condescendingly. It's the reality folding drive. It kicks out a nuke's worth of power every second. We'll fix it and take it up with Masahiro Heavy Industries. I don't deal with customer service. Just make it happen. I'll catch you later. I mean, if this is the reality folding drive that lets them create a reality to their, to their liking, why not simply have the rules of this reality? Like, even if it's necessary that that energy is output into this world, what, why not? Oh, hey, is this? This is the backside of the just of the uh, of the Marshall Building. Maybe there's a secret way in over here. That would be extremely useful to have. Uh, why did I come up here? I don't remember. Ooh. A green crest. That's a new one. We haven't seen greens before. Oh look, it's a secret shrine. Tawdry Poster. The hero of the 19th Corruption, Crimson Acid. She slit the throat of a demonic general. Good for her. Definitely hears that. Aha, up on the roof. More crystals. I have no idea how many crystals Crimson Acid is going to demand in exchange for the upgrade that I definitely want. So I think it's probably worth finishing exploring the uh, the citizen apartments and so on before we attempt to head out and see. If I had the air dash, I could probably double jump onto that from here. I might be able to do it now. No! Oh, that's a long way down. Uh, how lucky for me, then, that the laws of physics in this world are not those of our own. And uh, there is, in fact, no fall damage. See, if they can decide that there is simply no, uh, no like, damage to the, the, bo uh, the human body from the inertia of falling off of a, like, 15-story building, why can they not simply decide that the island is able to dissipate the heat in some other way. Is the kinetic energy of me hitting the ground rerouted to somewhere else uh, in this uh, in this simulated existence? Or is it uh, or is it simply cancelled out and ignored? If it's the if it's the latter, why can they not simply do that with the reality folding drive itself? Why, why don't they simply just, I say, as if I have any understanding of the, like, paracosmic significance of all of these different things. Paracosmic is a good word that I just made up. Okay, is this where we came up previously? No, we went across a little bridge, so we were over here before. Okay. So that way are the apartment complexes that lead back towards uh, the city centre. So I can hop onto here. We should be able to... Okay, I think I've seen all of these houses. Although I didn't see that Shinji, so let's go talk to him. And then there's those apartment blocks over there, which look much smaller and somewhat more miserable. And then there's all of these apartment blocks over here. Oh my god, an investigator's work is never done. However, I have been into that garden over there, haven't I? Oh, no, I went on the lower level. I didn't see the higher level yet. So yeah, I think it's probably worth finishing exploring this entire zone before I uh, go talk to Crimson Acid in the hope that I will have enough money dollars to be able to simply pay whatever her extortionate fee is without having to fuck about. Let's see, we've been, we've been through the water already. I'm not sure if there's multiple paths through the waterways though. Inaccurate alarm clock. 
Time is meaningless on the islands, but citizens cling to these old signifiers from their old lives for comfort. Hmm. I wonder what it means that time is meaningless. Time still passes, clearly. In fact, with regards to these islands being paradise and time passing, we can see rust, we can see decay, we can see dust. That would imply that there is some kind of entropy going on. Things break and wear away over time. Does this place have infinite natural supplies? So that all of these things can be replaced whenever necessary? Gazing across an endless cosmic desert. Drifting through an abyssal sea. Dreaming of an antique summit in a monolithic city overlooking an impossible cavern. All the good shit, you know? I'm pretty sure that's the that's uh, the way Shinji tries to flirt. That and calling me an asshole and disappearing in a puff of brimstone. Island sequence 006. We unite in hope. A great light falls upon the island. Is it a message from an astral god? So I guess they didn't have any contact with gods up until Island 006. We know that the... Uh, Bro, that is for reals a dog. Okay. And he's got he's got a, a fake sprite as well, as if he were a player character. So I think that this perhaps is where we're going to end it today. Island sequence 005. The sin of silence. Our architect, Romeo Silence, is deceived by cosmic deceit. Lured into treason against us by a god. He is executed, and the Silence family are forbidden from ascending to the council. Uh, yeah, so... I think that we'll kick off next time by having a conversation with a Shiba Inu, which is something I deeply wish I could do in real life. This this truly is one of the values of, uh... You know, video games as an art form. Other art forms require you to project onto a protagonist within them, rather than simply allowing you to be that person. We can truly live out our deepest and most fantastical desires, our hearts, uh... You know, the, the, our heart's desire, heart, our heart's desires. That's definitely the phrase I'm stumbling over. Um, and just truly experience them for ourselves, such as the ability to talk to a cool dog. Blissful sky. Clouds used to hide flocks of unspeakable flying horrors during the war. After the great betrayal, they finally became safe. So yeah. Um, I will leave you tonight with the uh, beautiful image of the world's orangest dog just staring directly at us. Eyebrows akimbo. And that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.